Welcome, everyone. Steve Adubato. Uh, we are joined by State Senator Patrick Dignan, who is chair of the Senate Transportation Committee. Senator, great to have you with us. Hey, Steve. Great to be here. When it comes to traffic fatalities in our state, what is happening? Why are there more and what are we doing? It is literally frightening. Um, in the afternoon, Steve, I will walk with my grandkids and, you know, sometimes they're on their bike, sometimes they're not. People flying by at 40 miles an hour. Um, you just sometimes wonder if people are even paying attention. Stop signs have become uh, advisory rather than obligatory. I'm sure you see the same thing. Uh, try and get out onto a main highway or main roadway. People sp speed up. I simply don't know what's going on. Uh, it, but then, you know, it's, it's a flip side, too. Kids, kids riding their bikes don't, are, are on the wrong side of the road. Uh, they're not stopping at stop signs. They're not putting out signals. It's really something that we have to get a handle on because they're, they're exploding. And the number, I, I am surprised, Steve, there aren't more. When I, when I uh, just literally walk around my neighborhood, and I'm talking about, I'm not on a main road. I'm in a residential residential area. And I was talking to somebody recently about this. You know, maybe especially in suburban areas, maybe the the tradition of waving sidewalks should no longer be an option for towns when you go before the planning board. I think sidewalks are more than ever needed. Maybe even the width of our roadways. You know, we now have 30 feet dedicated roadway. Maybe we should make it 40 to put in an extra lane for those that walk or, or ride bicycles. We really have to get a handle on it because it's real. It's, it's, it's scary. Senator, what is the zero Vision Zero Task Force and how does it relate to what we're talking about? Well, that is exactly, yeah, that's exactly what we're talking about. It's, it's a, it's, not yet law. It's, it's going through the legislature. It's going to be nine members from all of the uh, relevant, you know, state police, uh, the, uh, transportation, et cetera, to be appointed by the governor, as usual, Senate president and uh, the assembly speaker to basically examine this and come up with with state. See, the thing, Steve, about New Jersey, as you know, it's such a different state. I mean, Cape, the issues in Cape May are much different than the issues in Newark when it comes to traffic safety. So we got to get people from all over the state at the table to give their suggestions and observations. Senator, but that's, what the, that's what the task force is all about, to basically bring folks together into one room at one time and, and try and come up with some solutions. But Senator, by way of background, it's not just transportation that you're heavily involved in. You're the former chair of a legislative community dealing with education. You're also deeply concerned about autism. Uh, what is the initiative? What is the legislation you have proposed that has to do with helping those who are on the autism spectrum? Well, again, hand in hand, what we're talking about, uh, transportation. So many folks, I, I'll give you a case. I was over at JFK Hospital the other day, and uh, they have a bus that comes in in the morning where workers that that have cognitive problems, um, most of which had, were suffering from autism, autism, excuse me, are transported to the hospital. Well, that's great. God bless them. I know the ShopRite does that uh, and some other employers do that. But how about employers that would, would welcome uh, giving that opportunity, but those that are uh, experiencing the challenge don't have the transportation. Access link, which I've learned, really is very, very limited. It only comes from transportation hubs and it only goes out a mile. So this is something that we really, transportation, hey, transportation is an essential way to give people opportunity. And that's, that's the main focus of what I'm trying to, to pursue, uh, and especially being chair of transportation because we that opportunity. Can I get real quick, before I move to issues of behavioral and mental health, real quick, congestion pricing, the message you want to deliver around congestion pricing is? Crazy. I mean, we don't need uh, one thing that I have to say with the, uh, Governor Hochul and Governor Murphy, they've actually made peace. They're, they're working together. We don't need a war. Obviously, obviously, we, we do want to encourage people mass transportation. We don't need a war between New York and New Jersey. And that's what that is. That's that's really throwing down the mantle. And we don't need that. OK, let's talk behavioral and mental health. What needs to be done from your perspective on the state level in terms of legislation, uh, regulatory changes? policy, public policy, what needs to be done, Senator, as it relates to helping those and their family members dealing with mental behavioral health issues and the numbers, I shouldn't say numbers because numbers represent people, the number of people struggling and dealing with these issues is just uh, grown exponentially. It's, it's awful. I happen to have the pleasure of being over in Highland Park the other day and at the high school, they actually have 
a room set aside for kids that if they're suffering from stress or anxiety, suicidal, uh, a parent that's addicted or whatever, they have a psychologist at the high school all day long for those kids to go in, sit down, talk with the psychologist, and give them the support they need. I know the governor is now talking about having regional facilities. I'm, I'm from Missouri on that one. I think we really have to have it in each school. But it's access. Have, have you ever read the book, uh, Steve? It's one of my favorites. It's on the bestsellers. Look, The Body Keeps the Score. I no. recommend everybody do that. And it's basically- What is it again, Senator? The Body the, Keeps- The Body Keeps the Score. It's on the bestsellers list. And really how trauma- that is buried in your brain. You know, you could have an addictive parent. You could have a, a ch suffered from abuse. You could have a trauma in your life. Uh, yeah, folks that obviously come from other countries and deal with the state uh, challenges they have. There's no one size that fits all. And the most important thing is to listen, not medicate, not not prescribe. But listen to these young people. Find out what their problem is and give them the proper support. But it's a real challenge. Yeah, and as the senator is talking about that. ACEs, Adverse Childhood Experiences, strikes me. If you look at our programming, you'll see uh, past efforts to look at that. L let me ask you this, Senator, as it relates to child care, we have an initiative called Reimagine Child Care. The graphic is up right now, <clears throat> actually creating greater public awareness around the importance of affordable, accessible, quality child care. The connection between affordable, accessible, and quality child care and the New Jersey economy is? It's, it's unbelievable. I mean, how... A, a person that's, a, a, that's suffering in the lower end of the income scale can avail themselves to the limited resources we have. It's impossible. And, and the thing is, we're kicking a can down the road. Deal with these issues. Uh, give people the support they need. Uh, somebody told me, Stephen, you might know, what if there's only something like 500 and some odd child psychiatrists uh, outside of, of hospitals in the state of New Jersey. Does right. that sound same number? Does that number seem right? I don't know. Me? I don't know the number, uh, but I know but it's, it's not clearly enough. It's, it's, it's incredible. It's incredible. And then when you have folks that don't have, you know, good insurance and, and, and you know, may have language barriers, et cetera, that's what, that's what we really have to sit at the table. And that's what I hope this task force can do. Sit down, deal with the issues and make them, make, make the support available that we need. It's State hard for us. It's absolutely it, it hard. Is. And I promise they'll be doing more programming. And on the issue of child care, if you will, we'll be having State Senator Teresa Ruiz, who has introduced a package of legislation in that regard. Final word, Senator, do you want to say something about the importance of child care, please? It, can there be anything more important? I mean, it, 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 there, there are future, there, there are the thing we celebrate the most, most, let's give them the support they need. That's State Senator Patrick Dining, Dignan, the chair of the Transportation Committee in the Senate. Um, on a whole range of issues. Thank you, Senator. Appreciate it. Thanks, Steve. Keep up the good work. More importantly to you, stay with us. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Dr. Luke Ironman, a family medicine specialist at Holy Name. When was your last visit to your primary care doctor? Throughout the pandemic, many patients have put off their annual physicals and screenings, but preventative health care is critical for early detection of illnesses and to avoid future health problems. Your doctor can also help you develop a wellness plan to achieve your personal health goals. Your health can't wait. Be proactive and talk to your primary care doctor today about scheduling your annual physical. Also brought to you by the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, moving the region through air, land, rail, and sea. The Turrell Fund, supporting reimagined child care. Community Food Bank of New Jersey. Eastern Atlantic States Regional Council of Carpenters, IBEW Local 102, lighting the path, leading the way. Holy name, this place is different. Operating Engineers, Local 825, PSC, where your story is our business. Valley Bank, and by Rowan University.